Ever wanted to travel the Spanish main as a pirate, a trader, or just a general problem to society? Well, you can in Sid Meier's Pirates, and I've played all of them. But I guess the reason why you're here is to figure out, is it worth it? Don't worry, I'll tell you. My name is Fortifier, and welcome to Series Slayer. Simulation games are a very niche market. You either do them well and people flock to your product, or you do it wrong and it fades into obscurity. But if you want a company that does them right, then look no further than Microprose. Microprose released tons of games that covered pretty much any concept that you could imagine. 1942, the Pacific Air War, Acrojet, the Chaos Engine, Covert Actions, or whatever the hell that game is. More importantly, Civilization. I think if I went and looked at a full list of games that Microprose made, Civilization would probably be the big one that stood out for most people, maybe even you, the viewer. But in terms of administration, the two people who made Microprose were Bill Steely and Sid Meier, and during their time with Microprose, they released a shit ton of great games. So much so that when Microprose ran its course, Sid Meier was able to take his experience and start another company, Firaxis, which still creates Civilization and XCOM games to this day. But we're talking about pirates, and let's be honest, there aren't that many games out there that did piracy well. Today we have Sea of Thieves and its infamously toxic community of 8 year olds and the what if of Skull and Bones if it'll be released by Ubisoft, which we don't know. Back then when we were younger, pirate games were an odd exclusion. Tropico covered the theme, Wind Waker had some piracy, and obviously Monkey Island was Monkey Island. All of these games were theme driven, but up until Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the idea of a commercial piracy in game as a central focus was only really managed by one game, Sid Meier's Pirates. Now before we get into this, I want to point out that I have beaten all of these games, and as such, if you're sensitive to spoilers, even though there really aren't any, then you might not want to watch this video until you've taken the time to beat them, just as I have. Ready? Let's go. The first Pirates game was released in 1987. The original run of the game was on older gaming computers such as the Commodore 64, IBM PC, Amstrad CPC, Apple II, and the Macintosh. But let's be honest, I'd have a fucking coronary if I had to play a game like this in black and white, so instead I opted for the NES version, which was one of the first NES games that I ever played growing up. Now, I mentioned spoilers, but those don't happen until far, far down the road, because there wasn't an inherent storyline plot for a pretty long time. Instead, you just focused on doing anything that you wanted to do. Did you want to trade spices and accumulate wealth? You can do that. Do you want to woo the prettiest woman by working for the French? You could do that. Want to be a pirate and accumulate points and wealth and pretty much anything else? You can do that. There's literally no limit to what you can do outside of your career age. As you get to 40, your piracy career ends and your points are tallied. That's really all there is to it. This game has a speed run of like 5 seconds because you can literally go into a town, end your career, and the game is technically beat. It's just the way that it is. For me, it's a wonderful game, but unless you really like it, it could be interpreted as boring. But that's the beauty in the title. It's so boring that it's therapeutic to me. Sailing on the sea, no music, just the sounds of wind, combat, and victory? I definitely love this game. And it's only going to get better from here. But just so you know, Pirates on the PC is the more definitive version. And the NES version I played was really dumbed down. So if you like seeing a little bit more in terms of graphics, then I suggest playing the DOS version. If you want to experience like I did, Play the NES one. Next up we had Pirate's Gold, a dramatic facelift for the time that changed a lot of things. For starters, the character portraits and overall art style was significantly better, and instead of choosing to do things in cities, you can actually like walk around the city right to left, which wasn't much, but I felt was a kinda nice touch. There's a little bit more music, but it's essentially the same game. I personally played the Genesis version, but much like its predecessor, it had multiple ports, this time for the CD32, which was most likely the best game on the console, DOS, Mac, and Windows. Now again, like I mentioned previously, the Genesis version is a very watered down 16-bit iteration, which for me is fine. The gold version for PC has massively different aesthetic changes, which were recreated for 2012's Pirate's Gold Plus. I'm talking about drawn out scenes, highly artistic ones, but I don't need all that bullshit. I like the simple nature of just console gaming. Let's move on to the next one. The most recent edition of the game, in my opinion, is the best. Sid Meier's Pirates re-released in 2007. Now this time we had a plot. You were in a family that was in debt to a noble and because of a good trade deal, the family would be out of the debt for good. But of course this trade deal falls through and your family is kidnapped and broken up against different geographical areas. Now, 
This plot was always in this game, but it really wasn't made apparent as a core element until now. So right off the bat, it caught my attention. Fully animated scenes, the same classic game with monumentally improved graphics, ambience, story, missions, actual opportunities to boost up cities without having to trade a shit ton of tobacco. Sign me up. This was a game I easily put 150 hours into while others were playing Counter-Strike and more. So that begs the question, is it worth it? Absolutely, but that's just my opinion. Sid Meier's Pirates has done something that most companies are seemingly incapable of, a good open world time involving pirates where you're alone and in control. Sure, Sea of Thieves has done a great job, but this game is historically accurate, and to me that's a huge bonus, which is probably why I enjoyed Assassin's Creed Black Flag so much. And that's enough out of me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you get a chance, hit that subscribe button so you can see all of the new episodes that I release to you and all the other cool projects that I put out on this channel, like Ready Go Gaming Show, Generations, The Works, right? As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, fortify out, keep the flames hope burning, and the flames of retro gaming burning even stronger. Take care.